Yes, Pickens Jackson. Are you ready? Yes! Now live from the Whiskey 61 Lounge inside the Bank Plus Studio. You are listening to Mississippi's number one sports talk show, The Out of Bounds Show with Bo Bounds. Streaming worldwide live on the Out of Bounds radio app and on your radio at ESPN 105.9. The Soul. Man, oh man, oh man. Good morning. Welcome in on a football Friday. Always powered by Mississippi Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center. We'll have Madison Ridgeland Academy and JA on ESPN 1059 The Zone in the championship tomorrow, 115. I would think that pregame starts at 1245. 115, you can stream the show. Pass this on to your relatives. You can stream the show, uh, not the show. Well, you can stream the show, but the game on the Out of Bounds radio app. 105.9 The Zone, WRKS, ESPN. We're live in the Bank Plus studio. The show is brought to you by the Scallops and 10-ounce filet, Four Roses, Small Batch Bourbon. And Kessler Prime in the Renaissance. Visit KesslerPrime.com to make a reservation. And um, also... Uh, they have six private dining rooms that you can reserve um, for any time, but for the holidays. KesslerPrime.com. The Twitter handle, at Bow Bounds, driven by the Continental Tires at 49 Tire in Richland, Mississippi. They'll take care of your vehicles. Want to welcome you in. I've got the Blakey Blakester with me. I'm your host, Bow Bounds. We're going to hit a little Mississippi State here for a second. Really didn't do that much uh, MSU Ole Miss in the first hour. Um, weird week without Ole Miss A&M. Frustrating. Because I think that could have been a uh, maybe the game of the weekend nationally even. But but definitely the most intriguing, interesting, compelling game. Um, that's just two teams that... Y- y- when you look at how they played and who they are... Y- y- You would not have been surprised for it to come down to one possession late. And so that would have been a lot of fun. Farm Bureau Insurance call in line 601-707-3750. And um, we mentioned the Twitters at Bo Bounds. Uh, Don't forget about our Facebook page. There's a lot of content on there. There's a lot of content on there. Uh, Search the Out of Bounds show on Facebook and you can find us. And then, of course, um, we've got a lot of stuff going on with the Apple podcast. Search the Out of Bounds show. All kinds of good stuff there. Lee Sterling will stop by in, uh, if you want me to be exact, 12 minutes. Lee Sterling, ParamountSports.com will go over some of the games for this weekend. And um, he is the handicapper to the gods. And Lee... Shot me an email right here, and he said, uh, oh, wow. Um, He does have something really cool at the end of the interview. You're going to want to listen. Go ahead and write down the number. It's 800-400-9741. You'll want to jump in on what he's going to do at the end of the interview. One of his featured games is uh, the Saints, Atlanta, and and New Orleans. That's around the Saints a favorite five points? That's correct. Hmm. Uh no no Drew Brees. Sean Payton has yet to announce a starting quarterback. Is it gonna be you or me? Taysom Hill, Jameis Winston alternating every other play. I love it. I could see Sean Sean can do that because of what he's accomplished. Hey, I'm going to steal this. I want to talk about spaghetti and ice cream. Um, I don't think of, I don't think you ever want a big plate of spaghetti and ice cream together. Right. And so they don't, they don't go together. And that's what's happened with Mississippi state football. Um, the offensive personnel and Mike Leach slash the air raid is just, that's not a match. So you got spaghetti and ice cream on the same plate. 
I mean, do you really want your red sauce, spaghetti sauce going into your beautiful vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream or whatever it is that your uh, cookies and cream? I could see Blake being a cookies and cream guy. Mint chocolate chip. Oh, I love do not it. like mint. Love mint chocolate chip. Yeah, typical that you or would, brownie that chocolate, you would pick that chocolate brownie ice cream. I'll take that, but I don't want my meatballs in my ice cream. I'm with you. Okay, well that that's what the offensive personnel. This is spaghetti and ice cream. It is what has happened. Now I am told that in um, what time is it? Eight Three hours. Five. Mississippi State flies out at 11 a.m. this morning to Athens, Georgia. I am told that they will have 54 football players on the plane. Just let that set in for a second. They're going to go to Athens, Georgia to play the University of Georgia Bulldogs, that team that's red and black. They have great uniforms, by Beautiful the way. Beautiful uniforms. Golly. Um, Georgia Bulldogs, they have 54 players. So 60, I can do this real quick, 64, 74, 84, 85, 31, 31 less than what you can have legally, scholarship players. That's almost a whole 1A football team. (laughs) Just kidding. I mean, there are some high school football teams that will play tonight and tomorrow that have around 31 players on their team. Yeah. And they have advanced in the playoffs. Now, the bigger boys have you know, 55, 60, 65, 70 plus, but you, you know where I'm going. Um, this is spaghetti and ice cream, first of all, as far on the same plate with the spaghetti sauce and the ice cream melting and blending together, yuck. As far as the Mississippi State offensive personnel, which is a hodgepodge of dog poo-poo. And uh, now with everything that's happened, um... You have 54 scholarship players. Does that make you bet the game differently? I mean... I mean, you know, do you do you look at maybe doing something? You've thought about it all week. It's been hovering around 24, 25 points. 25 and a half, 24 and a half, 25, what, whatever. What, does it make you look at it or the over-under? Will they run out of gas to the point where you're like, hey, Georgia's not any good, but... If they've only got 54 players and they're gassed with nine minutes left and the game's already a little bit out of hand, could Georgia stack two more on there to do what they need to do on a line like that? 54 players. Uh, By the way, that includes um, a punter, a long snapper, a field goal kick. Let's just go ahead and take it down. 53, 52, 51, I mean, position players taking out specialty dudes, punter, long snapper, field goal kicker. I mean, there's rumor that 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 Blake's phone has been buzzing all morning Yeah, because Leach is looking for a long snapper just in case somebody tweaks a toenail in the first, you know, quarter, second quarter. You're down to 51 position players. You have... There's still a lot of back and forth as to how many scholarship quarterbacks you'll be taking on the trip. Some people said earlier in the week Costello was practicing. Some people said he was not practicing. I don't know. I'm not at practice. I kind of got the Allen Iverson thing on practice. So, Blake, if I take out a long snapper, punter, and field goal kicker, I got 51 position players going to the University of Georgia. Yeah, at best. And some of those guys really may not be able to play. They're just come. They're going to put on a uniform. Yeah, Mississippi State already leading the country in freshmen who have seen the field this year. Out of necessity, they may be playing equipment managers. Yeah, Res Dog says breaking news. Yeah, MSU to play eight man football in MAIS next season. Yeah, Nick asked if they're flying out in a duct tape twin engine Cessna. Goodness. Well, hey, here's what you know on the plane for this weekend. Everybody's got plenty of room. Right? Because usually if you take about 81 or 82, it's not as much room. Everybody gets plenty of room on the uh, on the plane ride at 11 a.m. The show is brought to you by Juniker Jewelry Store in Madison, Highland Colony. Engagement wedding rings. It's always Juniker Jewelry in Madison.
I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. When I was born, I got lucky. A gift, if you will. My early life was really hard for many reasons, but at the time, it really didn't seem all that hard. I had a close relationship with my brothers and sister and loads of friends. Those days of desperation and poverty led me to my job today, representing the people, not the powerful. But my job is really not a job because I never considered it work. In many ways, it's more like a public service. Now, as I age, I get to look back at all the cases and all the people and all the trials. And the best part is when I get to see you all out and about. When I pray before I sleep, I thank God for the gift I received at birth, the genuine love I have for people, all people. Maybe that's why my work never seemed like work to me. Morgan and Morgan for the people.com. Now pound law on your cell. Pound law, that's all. No representation is made that the quality of legal services are greater than those of other law firms. Office. All right. ParamountSports.com. ParamountSports.com. I need you to go ahead and remember this number because you'll you'll want it here in about seven minutes. 800 400 9741 800 400 9741. Write that down because you're going to be, you will want to be ready to rock and roll here in about seven minutes. 800 400 9741. The Out of Bounds Show is brought to you by the uh, Tito's Vodka Bloody Mary game this weekend. And uh, according to the Blakey Blakester, that's a number of games, but uh, Indiana and Ohio State play at 11, and Florida and Vanderbilt will. Put you in a good nap, too, at 11 a.m. Brought to you by Tito's Vodka Bloody Mary. We welcome in Lee Sterling, ParamountSports.com, 800-400-9741. Lee, let's, uh, let's jump into it. Lee joins us, by the way, on the Abita Andy Gator guest line. Georgia hosting Mississippi State. That line is jumping around 24 to 25 points. If you were going to play it, Lee, where would you go and why? So, big number here for the Georgia offense. I know they're making the, the change to JT Daniels. I've been calling for it since after probably the second game finally happening. Something must be going on. I mean, he must not have been 100%, uh, and they were protecting the kid. Uh, or Maybe he just didn't look good at all. So uh, I think they finally had to do it. I think it's going to work out. Uh, might take, you know, might be a little bit of, you know, breaking in. Uh, might be, you know, few series might be off, but I think eventually they'll get things going. Mississippi State defense is at least competitive. I mean, both teams have had major quarterback issues. Um, here, maybe the biggest problem here is where does Georgia get any motivation with all hopes re- really gone for getting into the national championship semifinals? I mean, they haven't been at this point any the, at any time over the last three years. So, uh I think Georgia wins 34-14. I think Mississippi State might stay under the number. All right. Yep. Well, Lee Sterling, ParamountSports.com. Uh, he likes Georgia in a snoozer. I agree with him. I don't think Georgia's going to be motivated. But Mississippi State, one, is not good, and two, only has about 54 players uh, that will be flying out this what, morning. What, what, do you, what do you think go, is going to go on with the Pirate? You think, if you had to guess, does he does he last? One year, two years, five years? What would be your guess at this Oh, I point? think he's going to get it turned around. This young, okay. th- this okay. quarterback that he's got uh, that's playing as a true freshman mm-hmm. um, can run the air raid. Now, it's not going right. to look good tomorrow because he doesn't have the right people around him yet. Right. Um, this Sawyer Robertson kid is a four-star out of Lubbock, Texas. That's all he, uh, I mean, that's all he knows. So, right. I think Leach will get it. Look, I'll just be honest, Lee. Joe Moorhead's a nice guy. Um, he left a super duper soft program right. in Starkville, right. yeah. and you know this. You've you've watched your Miami Hurricanes, who have been a great program at times, but also lost that culture component. Right. And when you lose the culture component, you ain't winning. I don't care who you have. That, that's right. That's it. And I think it's like helped Miami getting um, getting King from from Houston. Oh, so yeah. You get a quarterback, it masks a lot of weaknesses. So. He finds that guy, and it sounds like he, you know, he might have found, uh, you know, one, one, either the quarter, kid playing now or the kid coming in next year will be the answer, and then he'll put hopefully some some nice pieces around. Hey, if nothing else, he's going to find some receivers, and sure. he's going to be able to build an offense. So 
they just might have to win some games, you know, uh, 51-45. <laughs> Lee Sterling, ParamountSports.com. What's going on at Paramount Sports this weekend, Lee? So it's Customer Appreciation Week, and my way of saying thank you uh, for listening to the segment each week. So there's a lot of people out there that play my free selections, but maybe they'd like to get uh, the real good stuff. They want to do that, three free selections, no strings attached, just call us and give us your email, and we'll send those uh, out to you immediately. So just call 800-400-9741. We'll send you three free college football selections, 800-400-9741. And if football isn't your thing or you want to do UFC, you can pick three UFC selections uh, uh, in, 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 in lieu of the football selections. Nice. So your choice. So Paramount Sports. Dot com. You know, we're going to go over some games, but there's some other big games going on around the country. Ohio State, Indiana, Wisconsin, Northwestern, uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Cincinnati, UCF. You can check out those, those free pick videos, ParamountSports.com. Also. Nice. Yeah. All right, 800-400-9741. ParamountSports.com. Lee Sterling on the Abita Andy Gator guest line. Lee, let's jump to the uh, – to the next game, and that is Tennessee at Auburn. I think Pruitt would have gotten beat last weekend by A and M. Uh, now he goes to Auburn. They can't get it going on offense. Who do you like and why? So I, I think Auburn's getting it going here. Their their offense, uh, unlike Tennessee, they've rushed for at least two hundred yards each of the last four games, and that makes things easy for the quarterback. Bo Nix has not thrown an interception in any of the last two games, and. So I'm not saying he's great, but uh, he's playing within himself. And I think they can score low to mid-30s here. problem for Tennessee is they lack creativity on offense. They're caught in a quandary. You know, the head coach, uh, he's deciding, you know, hey, do I go with Gortano, who might give me a better chance to win this game, or do I go with the young guy? You know, uh, uh, do I think I'm going to be able to last a year or two and, and give a shot to Harrison Bailey and just play him throughout the game? So, um, they, they just their, their quarterback situation. It's been a merry-go-round so far this year. So I think Auburn can get to the low mid thirties. The question is, can Tennessee get twenty-one, twenty-four points? And I don't think so with this merry-go-round quarterback situation. So I think Tennessee is desperate. I just think they're incapable. I like Auburn thirty-four seventeen. Yeah. Do you have some thoughts, real quick, Lee, um, on Pruitt getting fired? Because I think now that Mus- um, South Carolina made a move on Muschamp. Yeah. Fulmer may be sitting there going, okay, if we get embarrassed one or two more times because I, uh, Pruitt can't get the offense going either, uh, I've got to make a move because if you don't have an offense this day and age, you're not winning ball games. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's. I think he's got to – what do they have, like three or four games? He's got to win a majority of his games yeah. down the stretch or else he's gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, Saints in Atlanta, no Drew Brees. Is five too many, though, even though uh, New Orleans could win the game, Lee? I think that they can. Um, I think Atlanta's got a shot here, and and I'm watching Jameis Winston. I just think he's the wrong guy for this offense. I think Teddy Bridgewater, much better fit last year. I think you're going to see a lot of Taysom Hill. So uh, if not for Todd Gurley's brain cramp, the Falcons would have been 4-0 under interim coach Raheem Morris here. Uh, Matt Ryan, uh, he's got his weapons back. He's eight touchdowns, just one interception the last four games. They were idle last week, got the game plan here. I'm calling for the upset. Wrong team is favored, Bo. Atlanta 24-23. He's got Matt Ryan and the Falcons, the Dirty Birds, beating the Saints. We'll ra- I, we've got two more here. Um, Coastal Carol- All right, App State's interesting because um, they've had Les- uh, Jerry Moore. Um, yeah. They've had Satterfield, and they've had Drinkwitz go through. Mm. And all they do is win. They got the culture yeah. component. But Coastal right. Carolina is on a, on a roll. Um, I think this is an intriguing G5 game. What do you see, Lee? It is. Well, both teams have played just one strong team. Coastal Carolina played Louisiana Lafayette and won on the road 30-27. App State, one tough team, played a tough Marshall team undefeated on the road, lost 17-7. Kid to watch. Watch dual-threat quarterback Grayson McCall here of, of, of Coastal Carolina. He is really good throwing the football, and he's running for almost 11 yards per carry when he tucks it under and run. Um, counterpart Zach Taylor was good last year, but he's been beaten up this year in all kinds of opt-outs and injuries at wide receiver and running back. I think the Sap State team just lacks explosion here this year. 
Uh, Coastal Carolina is going to lose a game, but it's not going to be this week. They stay unbeaten, 27-20. And let's wrap it up with this. Lee Sterling, ParamountSports.com. Some good games, college, and some really good games in the NFL. Lee, tell us what our listeners, um, what number they can call to get some picks. Like I said, 800-400-9741. Just call us. Give us your email. We'll send those three selections out to you. You want to hop on board. All the selections are available. Nine for 97 or November. ParamountSports.com. Lee, have a great weekend, buddy. See you, man. You too, Bo. Yeah, we'll check up next Wednesday, right before the holidays. Perfect. All right? Perfect. Okay, Bo. Lee Ster- That's a good call, actually. That's a great call by Lee. Lee Sterling, 800-400-9741. If you want the picks right now, 800-400-9741, Lee Sterling, ParamountSports.com. We're live in the Bank Plus studio. The show is brought to you by Chris Corley, Angel Oak Home Loans. Chris Corley, Angel Oak Home Loans. You're looking to refinance. Chris Corley, Angel Oak Home Loans, 601-540-6791. SEC Insider Hit this morning is brought to you by Acoustic Wave Treatment. If uh, if you suffer from ED, erectile dysfunction, you want to go to Acoustic Wave Treatment Center in Ridgeland. ED Acoustic Wave Treatment Center in Ridgeland. We're live in the Bank Plus studio. The Out of Bounds Show, ESPN 105.9 The Zone, is also presented by Dallas Body Shop in Ridgeland for all your collision repair. They do a super job. We've been taking our vehicles there for over 20 years. That would be Dallas Body Shop in Ridgeland, right behind Acura of Jackson. It's real, real close to Edwin Watts Golf Shop on uh, County Line Road. Out of Bounds, 105.9 The Zone. Blake Maney, I'm your host, Bo Bounds. Um, I did mention that I think that Mississippi State will be dressing out about 50-something players tomorrow. Um, you know, maybe 54, give or take. Um, you know, that includes a long snapper, punter, and field goal kicker, just if you're doing the math, and probably a couple other guys that aren't really available. So you may be really under 50 as far as position players. And what I mean by that is offensive and defensive uh, position players. It, it, Kirby Smart is living right. Um, they haven't done a good job there, but... Um, you know, they've got enough dudes to get through this game unless Leach can pull some kind of miracle as a 25-point underdog um, in this game. Uh, and and I could see, you know, a pick six, a strip sack, fumble TD type stuff just because you, get, you, you, you have a true freshman QB who, uh, you know, doesn't necessarily have the right pieces around him. He's probably going to try to do too much, and I think he'll hold on to the football a little too long throughout the game, which he did against Vanderbilt. And that's just because he's young and, and trying to make a play. So when you when you mix that up, uh, I think you'll have Georgia with some pinning their ears back moments. Well, if every play. Um, and that's going to be difficult, even without the fans in the stands. When you're backed up inside your 10 and 20, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, the ball's knocked loose. Some... Mm, Things may not happen right. And Georgia, don't don't count out Georgia. Uh, I know they don't know what they're doing on offense or at quarterback. Don't count out Georgia taking a kick or a punt back because they've still just got, I mean, they've got guys that can fly and that are really, really good football players. And I don't know who MSU's lining up on special teams at this point. Uh, and you don't either. Um, and so, you know, it's just one of those things that uh, could be, Dicey, to say the least. Blake, if you had to do it right now, do you take the points or give the points? It's a 25 now? Yeah. Oh, I just don't trust Georgia. I guess I'm going to take the points. I would, too. Uh, and I don't feel good about that at all. But 30, you know, I, I, can I just hit Sterling the had 34-14. How are we going to score 14 points? Stop it, Lee. That's a good point. I don't, I don't know think, how that would work. I don't think State scores. Let me think about that for a second. I in, guess if uh, JT Daniels turns the ball over, 
he would need to throw it to Martin Emerson in Georgia territory. Yeah. Tory. Sack fumble, maybe behind the line of scrimmage. Maybe Kobe Jones, Crummity, can can shake him up, knock the ball out. Maybe, you know, you get the ball on the four-yard line and somehow... Kick a field goal? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. But uh, I'll take the 25. Why not? Why not? Um, it may be super out of control, or it may just be kind of out of control. Now, the uh, we, Tennessee and Auburn should be a super competitive game. I just don't know if it will be. It should be on paper. They're almost identical. Uh, I mean, they pretty much are. They, you know, there's not really, I don't think, a penny's worth of difference in roster talent. Auburn, Tennessee. Um, but can Tennessee sustain some scoring drives and, and drive the ball down the field, punch the the darn thing into the end zone. I don't know. And then LSU at Arkansas. Man, there's a lot of stuff going on around that LSU program that's not good, Blake. You mentioned yeah. the uh, couple of articles dropped earlier in the week. Surrounding reports and allegations regarding former LSU running back Darius Geis, a couple of transferred players, and some other guys that are still on the team, I believe, that Basically, all revolving around either sexual misconduct or domestic violence, things like that, um, and perhaps the inattentive way in which the LSU football team or the LSU athletic administration handled said reports. Mm. It's dicey. It's obviously not all come out, but um, right. anytime you hear any They're of still those, investigating. any of those allegations are serious in nature and obviously are going to raise red flags and eyebrows across the country. Um, LSU, yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting next couple months for the LSU athletic department. Mm. On top of that, and that's a bad deal. On top of that, they are uh, they're playing an Arkansas team that's just feisty and believes in their coach and Correct. their coordinators. You know, they're they're in. And and they're excited to play for those guys, Barry Odom and and um, Sam Pittman and and Kendall Browse. What if Arkansas pulls this one off in year one? Uh, Sam Pittman, what are we doing? Uh, that's an eleven a.m. Tito's vodka Bloody Mary kick. If that game holds, it could be really good going into the fourth quarter Absolutely. around two o'clock, two thirty in the afternoon. Blake, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Arkansas has got a chance. They don't have any talent. I mean, I don't think they are built to score the ball, so it's going to be about LSU making mistakes. And yeah. then LSU's defense has given up like 480-something yards a game, which is not even realistic. I mean, that number is insane. Uh, and so Arkansas with Rakeem Boyd, maybe just slow it down, kind of keep LSU's more potent side of the football, the offensive side of the football, off the field. So uh, it'll be, that'll be an interesting game to watch. But you know what it brings up, Bo? It's two head coaches who are trying to do it the Saban way. And what I mean by that is kind of what Lugan Bill and Dave Bartu have talked about this week, the CEO approach, right? So that's the Saban way used to be about defense, but really what the Saban way is about, it's CEO, it's yeah. program management, right? right. And Orgeron. And he is so good at oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Our, I that think in, inarguably the best program manager in college football history. Yeah. Whatever you want to dictate that, to, but you know whether you want to talk about X's and O's and coaching and all that, he is the best program manager. He took a program that was in probation and lost to ULM, and in twelve seasons has five national ch championships, something like that. He's he's just under fifty percent on ter in terms of titles per season played, which is insane. Uh, I mean, that's not even a real. That's not that's video game numbers. But Pittman has taken the the Saban CEO approach. He's hired two great coordinators and backed off. Right. Orgeron, for 90% of his career, did not take that approach. But last season took the, the yeah, Saban approach. He, he meddled too much in the offense. Well, 100% at Ole Miss, even and, and, at LSU and, at the beginning. Right. And then he started to back off at Southern Cal. I think he went five and one or something down the stretch, or six and two or something. He's after part of Kiffin the, was fired. He's part of the reason they lost to Troy, though. He yeah. he was he got in the offensive room. Canada. And we him, were told by a player. Yes, you and I were. Matt Canada and he went back and forth. Right. He jumped in. He jumped in the room that week. 
And uh, said, we're going to run the ball and play LSU offense. That's right. And they got beat by Troy. That's right. And Neil Brown. Ball control. Yeah. So so he finally steps off and he lets it go. We're going to let him punt. Well, I mean, we're going to get our, make sure our defense stops him nine times tonight. Yeah. Put all the pressure on them. Yeah. But but what happened after that one year, right? It all worked. And Dan now- Mullen in a in what had a a nice team in 2017 beat them 37 yeah. to seven. Yes. At the end of the day, that's really who Ed Ogeron is. Yes, because you're seeing that this season, right? Okay, so Sam Pittman can he maintain Kendall Browse and Barry Odom level coordinators at that at Arkansas? No, no. Can no. he go hire two of those guys again at the same time? Probably if he was there. For five, ten years, probably, probably not. not, right? No. The, so, the, well, the 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 percentages tell us no. Right? The odds tell us no. No. Other than Dabo at Clemson, which is really an anomaly, Saban has had issues with keeping the right coordinators in place on both sides of the football. Uh, Urban Meyer has kind of maybe due to his own volatility gone back and forth <laughs> with some different things, but you know. Um, Bob Stoops could never get the right defensive guy in place. Well, as as wonderful a coach as he is, he leaned on his brother. Nepotism killed him. That's right. But but the point of that is the when fact Bart- that he let Brent Venables go, go to an airport, yes, yep. in Oklahoma City, yep. and get on a plane mm-hmm. and fly to Atlanta, and then go to Clemson, is and then make Clemson a powerhouse and make Clemson yeah. a powerhouse. Yeah. So. So and what did Brent Venables said in that article last year? Maybe the athletic dot com. You know, his wife was like, "You're going, yeah, you're going to that interview," and it worked out well. Oh, but but see, Dabo hasn't Who had to knew, deal with this. Man. Who knew back then? Nobody. You know, we weren't paying attention to Brent Venables or jumping Clemson. on an airplane to go to Clemson to to take that program to another level under Dabo and Clemson, South Carolina, to, be, to become this. I mean, it is, it's amazing what has happened there. Yeah. But my point of that you is... You guys, all those guys, their their kids have made that area a, a high school football yeah. juggernaut. They're Dabos on the team. and Venables and these other dudes' kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're... Not only did they build Clemson into a powerhouse and this huge shot in the arm economic development-wise in Clemson, South Carolina, they, high school football, their kids are beating people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But but the one thing Dabo hasn't had to do is replace his coordinators yet. We may see that happen. We've already, he's, he's lost one, finally. Jeff uh, Scott went to South Florida. Still has Tony Elliott and still has Brent Venables. But my point of all that is to hey, say... Hey, he's still got Woody McCorby. Well, Don't you true. ever forget yeah. that. The Wood Dog. He's um, kind of like his chief of staff. Congrats, I guess. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the backbone of what Bartu says, what Lugamil says, oh, I'd hire a CEO head coach. My point of all that is, and you're going to see it this weekend in Pittman and Ed Orgeron, a prime example of one guy who's in the middle of getting it right and one guy who's post getting it right. It's impossible to keep that system going. All right. Well, you're right. You so, got to hire Mullen or Freeze or Napier. You got to hire Lincoln Riley or maybe Ryan Day, I guess. We're still figuring out about him. You, the offensive mind is what they just translates landed the to top 20, 22 recruit yesterday at Ohio State. Shocking. Quarterback. Things seem to be going the yeah. right way in Columbus, Ohio. Is Kirby Smart, CEO, managing his program the right way? No. Okay. Is Ed Orgeron this season, right? He's one he, He's one for 30, Kirby Kirby is getting a gift from the football gods tomorrow, playing Mississippi State with around 54 people on yeah. the roster. Yeah. You know, if Kirby gets Mike Leach in two years, not the same deal. Yeah. Should Georgia win that game? Obviously. But... Different deal. Mike will have that offense tuned up, and uh, but today, you know, you're, you, he Kirby gets to go against a true freshman quarterback with 54 players on the roster. And about 19 of them are freshmen. Yeah, playing. Yeah. But my point: look at Sam Pittman in Arkansas. We're all happy about Sam Pittman and the great job he's doing this year. But let's be realistic. His I don't best, want to be realistic. His I'm best a fan. OCDC pairing will be in a season where he can't even accomplish anything. I know. Okay. Ed Orgeron caught lightning in a bottle last year, but it's not a formula that makes for success. Who are the coaches who can continuously have success over think, the course of time in college football? Guys with their hand on the quarterback. Yeah. Offensive guys. Do you think that Southern Miss could pull Kendall Browse? For a season. Is it worth it? I think it is. 
For Southern, yeah. For Kendall, maybe not. I mean, if you can come up with one point five million, what if you can just stay at Arkansas, and not have to make a move for one season, and be a head coach, and then just be a head coach at a better program? Maybe, like you know, would would if Fulmer doesn't go freeze, would he go Kendall Browse? If Coastal Carolina's guy does make a move, that would be does what Kendall Browse go there? If App State continues to because all they do is win, and then put coaches in the D1, right. yeah. and Kendall goes, I'll take yeah. the App State job for yeah. $1.5 million. Well, What domino opens up when Mich- if Michigan or opens if up in Tennessee? Now, if Mike Gundy messes up, Ooh, yeah. Kendall, you put you drop Kendall Bryles at Oklahoma State, you got something. You, you, you're, you're cooking there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, they're know? already running a close enough system to what he would be running. Right. I mean, it's almost... As Freeze if, talked about, their cousins, basically. If Gary Patterson retired, he's been at TCU oh, forever yeah. and made a fortune. If Gary Patterson retired, Kendall Bryles, OC at Arkansas to TCU, grew up in Texas, man. So, so are those hire- are some I- intriguing... Uh, are you hiring Freeze or Bryles? See, Bartu told you Freeze was the bottom of his list in terms of the like three or four guys we put out for South Carolina. Did and we it was get be- to play that in the first hour? Yes. Okay. And it was because Freeze has not shown a pattern of managing a program. And Bart and see in Bartu's mind, he mentions Mario Cristobal. Well, yeah, you're you're putting together a good OCDC pairing and you're managing the pro- program. That's all well and good, but Cristobal doesn't play anybody out in the Pac-12. In the SEC, what happens when you have a good OC? He's poached quickly. You can't. Saban can't keep a competent offensive coordinator and a competent defensive coordinator on the staff at the same time anymore. So how are you going to do it at any other program? Here's another, uh, here's a great text. We talked about Dabo and his kids and all the assistant kids at Clemson making whatever the high school is there a, a powerhouse. We just received a text from someone in Starkville listening on the Out of Bounds radio app. Thank you. And he said Mullen leaving Starkville Academy cost them two, possibly three state championships in football with all the assistant coaches' kids that were going through that program. Isn't that amazing yeah. that that can happen every now and then? That you bottle that and you've got kind of difference? Because all it takes is four or five kids and, and they're difference makers. You Maybe know? not even that many in Mississippi high school football. True. But it, at a at a high school in Clemson, at a high school in Starkville, at a high school in the Jackson Metro area, man, in that it, it, that's nuts. Uh, Brent Venable's kids and da- well, as some other assistants. It's a byproduct again of of why having your college like being in that college town is such a unique experience because you it it bleeds through from the university to everything else that's right. in that town. You know what I mean? That's right. Um, Pete Carroll's another guy. He couldn't keep the coordinators at the level that he needed to. Like, it's just hard. And you're talking about replacing OCs and DCs. Bruce sends us a text on the Mississippi Ag text line, 601-885-3776. He's a big Arkansas fan. He said, I'm going to be watching the Arkansas-LSU game at the Rusty Nail. Hey, I've heard of that. In Cool Bar. Rusty nail in New Orleans. I'm going to get under some corn dogs skin tomorrow. Go Hawks. Yes, sir. Yeehaw, baby. That's an 11 a.m. game. Sweet. Pick, 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 pick. Do we have. Well, we don't have time. No, we wouldn't. Okay. We All got right. into some good coaching talk. I don't know why Mario Cristobal would leave Oregon to go to Michigan. So Oregon, that makes no sense to me. I mean, Oregon is now tied as the number one yep. recruiter in the Pac-12 with Southern Cal. Um, Fourth best class this this uh, season right now. Cristobal's recruiting like out like you're taught to recruit at Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he's literally pulling kids to Eugene, Oregon, out in the middle of nowhere. I think the average kid is about twenty five hundred miles away. Hired a great OC. In Joe Moorhead? You like saying that? He's going to tear the Pac-12 apart. That's what's going to be so frustrating. Is Joe Moorhead's tenure at at Mississippi State, I think, in the grand scheme of things, is going to be a blip on his radar because I think he's got success in the right areas. Mm-hmm. And 
he's going to get another job and a chance to be a head coach somewhere that's not in the South, and he's probably going to have success. He could. I mean, his system I don't know works if in Joe certain areas. Can do it as a head coach, even at Penn State. You know, there's rumors that Penn State wants him now. Um, James Franklin just doesn't have the stuff anymore for that fan base. Evidently, boy, they'll turn in. You know, he almost had him in the national in the in the in the playoff yeah. a couple of years ago, and now they're ready to. Yeah. Yeah, he's an excellent head coach. Uh, there are already rumors in the Penn State family that they would love to see Moorhead come back. I don't believe for a sec- I, I don't know if Moorhead can run a program like that, A to Z. I, I'm just not con- convinced of that. But I may, I think he may be perfect, Blake, at a Power 5 school like you're talking about that's not in the SEC, yep. like Pac-12, Big 12, or Big 10, where he can do whatever he's trying to do on offense. He obviously wa- walked into some good talent, too. Yep. Pac-12 North is not good garbage it's not good chris peterson's washington team is long gone um after he stepped down and and so on so leach not at washington state trying to take you know lemons and make them pina coladas like like leach was able to do that you know utah can't even get on the field they haven't played a game yet this season have they not played a game it's remarkable we have sec schools with like eight games seven games under their belts and the Utah Utes have yet to take the field. It's remarkable how poorly managed this whole situation was. Wow. I did not realize Do that. Do you think Southern Cal is going to make a move in a weird well, season? Well, he's now won two super close games, which is yes. not a good thing for them. Um, This is the time to hire Urban. Yes. he. I think he's enjoying Los Angeles. Um, I think he very much understands what he could do there. And I think Urban would like to win one more or two more titles and burn out again, but make, you know, 30 million bucks over five years. Well, maybe more than that. 30, 35, 40 million bucks over five years. Win a, t- win a natty. It, he'd love to beat Ohio State or Florida or Bama in the national championship game. That would be th- three different schools where he's won, like LeBron. LeBron's won at Miami, Cleveland, and L.A. Urban Meyer would win it at Florida, Ohio State, and Southern Cal. It's probably the only coach that would have done that. Sure. That's remarkable stuff right there. And to do it in three different parts of the country. Yeah. Florida, Midwest, and out west. They would slaughter the, the, the Pac-12. He would take Mario Cristobal behind the woodshed. It would be bad. Get, give Urban one year, he'd shut that Joe Moorhead stuff down. I mean, he would run through the Pac-12. Absolutely dominate out there. They've already got a good roster. Well, a really good roster. He'd probably just bump it yeah. just a little bit in that first year. Boom. But game they're on. down from... What's so funny is I grew up in the, like, heyday, I guess, like, Southern Cal's run with Pete Carroll started kind of right along when I was like really getting into football. And so like for all the two thousands, you know, and even into the 2010s, you knew USC is like a top five talent team and they were exciting to watch even right after Carroll left. Obviously it declined pretty hard. Um, after that, although Kiffin had that one good year, he did. He went 10 and two, but they've always had that elite talent. Well, they're actually like the 12th best team right now, according to two, four, seven sports. 11 or 12, and Oregon's right there with them, like you said, tied. And so, I mean, Urban, what Urban would do, coupled with what would happen at South Southern uh, South Carolina and Tennessee, you might see Georgia start to fall even down closer to 10 in terms of talent. Because, so, like, Urban at Southern Cal is going to bump them back up. Hugh Freeze at Tennessee is going to make them even more talented. Like, it's going to be tough for these SEC schools that are on the fringe. I can't wait to I see it. Higher. I know that wouldn't that be, great? but the problem is they're not going to fire. Uh, he he just won two back to back close games yeah. by possession, and I, they're going to. Yeah, I think if he'd have lost those two, might be different. Urban Meyer to Southern Cal. Instead, Ur- that may be Urban to Texas. Penn State? No, he's not going to Penn State. But it sounds good. The Out of Bounds Show on ESPN 105.9 The Zone is brought to you by Went McGee, the mortgage man. He'll shop the best rates for you. MortgageManMS.com. Went McGee, buying a new home, townhouse, condo. Went McGee, MortgageManMS.com. 
We are live in the Bank Plus studio. The show is driven by the Continental Tires at 49 Tire in Richland, Mississippi. Hour number three coming up.